<laughs> I didn't see that one coming. Oh, yeah, he's just like the late, great Tim Russert. You just can't tell with Keith Olbermann. What it stopped people from talking about over at NBC was Larry O'Donnell. I know. That's a question not asked very often. What did Larry O'Donnell say? He's Oberman's co-worker, fellow news anchor, the new hot lover boy over there. He said on Friday he's not a liberal. No, no, no. I mean, he can play it straight as an arrow on the air. What is he? He's not a liberal. This is what he said. Hi, Glenn. Unlike you, I am not a progressive. I am not a liberal was so afraid of the word that I had to change my name to progressive. I'm not either. Oh, Liberals my. amuse me. I am a socialist. I live to the extreme <laughs> left. Great. The extreme left of you mere liberals. There you go. I'm sorry. Can we play it again? Because you might have missed it. It was pretty subtle. Did you hear what he said? Listen to his political leaning. Oh, Liberals my. amuse me. I am a socialist. But didn't we just hear that there are no socialists? And I'm getting tired of saying that's a socialist mop. Wait a minute starting to unmask themselves. He's to the far, far left. He's going after progressives. They're not left enough. But listen to why he is going after progressives. Listen to this. Liberals are 20% of the electorate. Conservatives are 41% of the Rare electorate. honesty. Okay? So I don't pretend that my views, which would ban all guns in America, make Medicare available to all in America, have any chance of happening in the federal government. The only I... way you have a Chairman Barney Frank, there's only one way, that's by electing blue okay. dogs. Glenn it's the talk. only okay, way you it? have a that, speaker. Okay, stop, 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 stop. Listen to this. This is what he's saying. I'm a socialist, and there's no way anything I believe is going to happen. That's why you elect blue dogs, and you hide behind them. Mark my words, by the end of the week, by the end of the week, they are either going to be out full-fledged or they're going to be hiding. And they're going to try to make me into the biggest conspiracy theorist in the country. Is a conspiracy. This is what he's saying. Hide. you got to go and hide behind the blue dogs. You can't, you can't be out in the open. I'm playing his words, as I will do on Soros starting tomorrow. Play it in his words. Do not take my word for any of it. You look at their words. You look it up yourself. Now, the crew on the set laughing and chortling. Oh, <laughs> but I don't know about you. I don't pal around with communists. I don't know any radical revolutionaries. I don't know any socialists. But apparently at NBC and Newsweek, it's not such a big deal. It wasn't long ago that we were appalled at the, par uh, at the thought of communists. I didn't, two years ago, I didn't think there were any actual communists. But we are past that now. Remember, the second birth pang, radicals reveal themselves. They're unafraid. And look at what the Communist Party USA is now releasing. Watch. Hi, my name's Garen. I'm a farm worker. My hobbies are watching television and reading books. And I'm a communist. Hi, my name is Arturo. I do home remodeling. And I love Jimi Hendrix, I love you too, and the Lakers. Y también soy comunista. Hi, I'm Dave, and I'm an environmental scientist, and I want to build a more sustainable, better America, a better world. I love to bicycle and hike and sing in my church choir, and I'm a communist. He's just like you, except except he's a communist. And that's not a problem. No, no, no. Let me show you what communism actually looks like, where people actually had their names changed to numbers in China. There they are. See the numbers? They're not in prison. That's how they did it in China. Just change them to numbers. People are meaningless. 10 million starved under Stalin. Mao killed 2.5 million during his Great Leap Forward program. Tens of millions of innocent people were killed. That is what communism really looks like. But we don't teach that in our schools anymore. And finally is the last birth pang. What are we giving birth to? The last one is a money crisis. I have been warning you that we are on the same path to repeat the same exact mistakes as the Weimar Republic. We've hit the top of our debt standard. Nobody's going to want to loan to us. And so what happens? When we can't fund it through loans or we can't afford the, um, the um, uh, interest, we'll just start printing more money and we're printing it like there's no tomorrow. Well, this is what leads to things like bread in a wheelbarrow. 
here's where the rest of the world is starting to line up and blame us. And that is what we've done to our dollar. You got it? You got it? This I said under George W. Bush. The bought and paid for critics of mine will always, from there he goes talking about Hitler again, and completely missing the point, which is this. Germany financially collapsed. That's kind of a historic fact, and it's kind of important not to glaze over that, isn't it? How did it collapse? Why did it collapse? What did they do? We should probably know the answer to that. Well, here it is. They monetized their debt. Did we learn our lesson from that? Well, I'll let Tim Geithner and Ben Bernanke, under oath, let you know. Next. When I said on this program that we would monetize the debt, all of the experts said, Glenn Beck's completely insane. Tim Geithner promised it during an interview. Never do it. Ben Bernanke promised it under oath that they would never monetize the debt. Will the Federal, Federal Reserve, Reserve monetize this debt? The Federal Reserve will not monetize the debt. Why is this not the dreaded concept of monetizing the debt which so many economists war warn against? Uh, there's no risk of that in the United States because, again, we have a strong independent central bank. A man's word is his bond. Glenn Beck is off his rocker. Don't listen to him. Oh, wait. Wait, what, what's that? Oh. Oh. It's an announcement from the Fed last week that they are monetizing the debt. Oh, and they're re reinvesting about $250 billion to $300 billion more on top of the $600 billion proposed of monetizing of our debt. So it's nearly a trillion dollars. But as Tim Geithner said, there's no chance of that happening in America. I also said that food inflation was coming. This is from April 2008. Listen. It's not that America is going to run out of food, because we're not. It's that food is going to get a lot more expensive. So now is the time to stock up bef uh, you know, before the prices rise even more. Okay. Once again, mocked. I can't tell you when things are going to happen. I have no idea. I can't tell you. I don't know even what we're giving birth to, although I have a feeling it's a new world order. I don't know when the birth date is. But here's what's coming. Inflation. According to the NIA, National Inflation Association, I had these guys checked out six ways to Sunday. Joe, these are credible people. Credible people. This is unbelievable. The food crisis on inflation will be, according to uh, the National Institute of whatever it is, will be the top crisis in 2011. According to them, we can see prices as high for one ear of corn $11.43. One ear of corn. $24, $23.05 for a 24 ounce loaf of wheat bread. This, $62.21. 32 ounce packaged granulated sugar, Domino's. Um, milk, try this out for size. Hey, mom, only $24.31 for a 32 ounce container of soy milk. Coffee, $77.71 for an 11 and a half ounce container of Folgers Classic Roast Coffee. Not according to me, according to inflation experts. How about this one? This is um, 15 fluid ounces. If you get a 64 fluid ounce container of Minute Maid orange juice, $45.71. I had to check this one because I couldn't believe it. This is 1.55 ounces. For 1.55 ounce of Hershey's milk chocolate, they say this could cost as much as $15.50. Welcome to your future of monetizing the debt. Of course, now I should mention that your salary is supposed to go right up with inflation. And if you believe that, I've got a bridge right here in New York. You let me know how that works out for you. What is the rest of the world saying about monetizing our debt? I told you that we were setting ourselves up to be the villains. Well, here is the Chinese finance vice minister. Here is what he said about it. As a major reserve currency, uh, a major reserve currency issuer for the United States to uh, launch a second round of quantitative easing at this time, we feel that it did not recognize its responsibility to stabilize global markets and did not think about the impact of excessive liquidity on emerging markets. Uh-oh. How about the Germans? 
They've lashed out. They said, I don't think that the Americans are going to solve their problems with this, and I believe it's going to create extra problems for the world. Brazil said the Fed's move, it will devalue the dollar, hurt Brazil and other export-dependent economies. The fingers will all be pointing to us. Here's what I ask you to do. I want you to DVR this entire week. I need you to take notes. I need you to pass them to a friend. I need you to tell everybody you know, watch this important series this week. Information is the best weapon available. Food prices will be going up. The dollar is being intentionally collapsed. You will understand that in, oh my gosh, unbelievable clarity by the end of the week. We are also training the world to blame America for every problem that pops up. When times uh, are tough and they hit hard, do you really think the rest of the world is going to let the big bad America off without any punishment? And one more thought. Who is it that all of us uninformed Americans will run to for help? The answers this week. Back in a minute.